At its most basic level, the web is driven by keywords. So somebody types something into a Google search box and then they receive results back, right? Now we as website owners respond to this by optimizing our websites for the keywords in our niche that people actually search for. So we run our traffic and our competition analysis before we set up our site. We build links using our main keyword as anchor text. We do on-page optimization, like making sure that our title tag uses our main keyword. And we also mention our main keyword a few times throughout our page. But when we do so, we are overlooking the long tail of search. That is those keywords that don't get enough traffic individually to build a whole site around. So when you add it up, in most markets, the combined long tail actually gets more searches than the main keyword phrase itself. This is where your content strategy becomes so important. You will use your content to create pages on your site specifically targeted towards those lower traffic, lower competition key phrases. Now looking at the screen capture here, you can see that the highest volume key phrase in this example was just the word long tail. Then there's a listing, and of course you can't see it all, but of 199 additional key phrases that get less traffic than that main keyword phrase, but are still related to the main keyword phrase. Now most markets are going to look pretty similar to this. Now add it up, those long tail key phrases get more searches per month than the singular main keyword phrase. In this case, that was long tail. What's even better is that typically these long tail keyword phrases are pretty easy to rank for but we often overlook the ability to rank for these lower traffic, lower competition, long tail key phrases because we think it's too hard or that to write all the content that would be required would take too long. But that's what this course is about. You'll learn how to create quality content for these long tail type key phrases without writing an epic novel for each one. Now this is a picture of Universal Search and it came out in 2007 in beta. Now it's just the way that search works. So you're pretty familiar with seeing a search results page that looks like this. So Universal Search displays videos, images, real-time tweets, maps, local business listings, news, books, blogs, and more. What types of content are displayed depend on what you search for and what Google thinks is most relevant for that topic. So you'll see different types of content uh, depending on what you've actually searched for. You may or may not get images. You may or may not get news depending on the topic. Google knows that some topics lend themselves better to images or video or a local business listing. And what Google understands, you should too, so that you can provide that kind of content to your visitors. When you do, it might show up at the top of the results page as part of universal search and then bring you additional traffic. So you want to be aware of multimedia because number one, it can give your site placement in the universal search sections. And two, some topics just lend themselves to multimedia. So take advantage and give your visitors a great experience when they visit your site by fulfilling that need for some multimedia type of content. Now, how engaged are your site visitors? Does bounce rate affect your rankings? Does click-through rating affect your rankings? Do visitors stay on your site for a few seconds or are they browsing for several minutes? Now there are quite a few ways that Google could be measuring user engagement with your site. And it's a very hotly debated subject amongst the SEO loving spreadsheet data gathering crowd. But officially Google has never said that user engagement in the form of bounce rates or CTR affects your rankings. In late October 2010, Bing did confirm that, and I'm going to quote here, listings in the search results that do not get clicked on will likely lower their rankings. So Google is collecting click data both within their search results through their toolbar, through the Chrome browser, and even possibly with their analytics package, although sometimes they say that they're not. Again, the extent that the data is mashed up and made a part of the algorithm is hugely debated, so we don't need to put on our tinfoil hats yet. But they recently just released an extension for Chrome allowing people to block whole domains from ever appearing in their search results again. And what they said about that was that uh, we will be studying the resulting feedback and explore using it as a potential ranking signal for our search results. So no tinfoil hats, but I do want you to consider that if users are consistently bouncing off your site, and that means that they're clicking through from group from Google results, looking at a page on your site, and then clicking the back button on your browser, that could be seen as a negative factor in your rankings. If your site's listed in the results pages for your key phrase, but nobody ever clicks on it, 
we know, because they've said so, that that's a negative ranking factor for Bing. Now, my suspicion is that that's a negative ranking factor for Google, too, even though they haven't said so officially. So keep user engagement in mind. The attention of your site visitors could be the most important metric you can measure going forward. Great content is probably the most effective way to keep your visitors' attention. Multimedia content, like we just spoke about, particular audio and video, also keeps users on your site for longer and encourages their attention. Just like social sharing has become a more important factor in ranking, expect that user engagement becomes even more important as time moves on. Now, creating great content isn't just about putting words, images, or video on a page. The search engines are very demanding, and they'd like your site to be producing fresh, recent content as well. So let's look at some examples of how new content can improve your rankings, your traffic, or both. So here we see again universal search. Universal search will sometimes decide that real time as recent as possible results are what searchers are looking for when they enter in a certain query. So what we're seeing here is a screenshot of the results for the uh, delightful Lindsay Lohan and Google thinks that showing recent tweets about Lindsay is important and relevant for a query about her. So without pushing out fresh content, you won't be listed in these kinds of real-time, uh, immediate results. And of course, real people like to see new recent info on your site, too. Now, this was a uh, Google patent. And when Google files a patent, the SEO world goes completely nutso. Again, we don't need to do the tinfoil hat thing, but this one is something to be aware of. Now, their patent was on information retrieval based on historical data. And it's important to you because it includes a few concepts that relate to the freshness and newness of the content on your site. Um, in particular, this patent introduces the concept of document inception. And that means that when the, the idea of that is when a site or page was discovered by Google, and that document inception can be a credibility factor for your site. So older, though, isn't necessarily always better. While a long established domain is given certain like street cred due to its age, this patent also introduces the idea of freshness or staleness of a site, one or the other. Google says that for some unchanging topics, like a, you know, a dictionary definition of a word, Stale results may be more relevant to serve up to users, while for some queries like Lindsay Lohan, fresh content is a more applicable result and what Google believes that searchers would be looking for. Now, most visitors appreciate recent information as well, and a site that hasn't been updated in a year doesn't exactly instill confidence from your visitors in the information that you have on your site. So freshness is important not only to Google, but to your site visitors as well. Now, in June of 2010, Google introduced a major algorithm change that they called Google Caffeine. And the image that you're seeing here is Google's own illustration of the old index compared to the new Caffeine index. What Google, or sorry, what Caffeine did for Google was uh, allow it to index more content much, quick, much more quickly. Uh, as we are producing in the illustration, you can see people are out there posting blogs, posting pictures, posting videos because of all of the different ways that we can share that content online now. So the information on the internet was growing at an immense speed and Google basically couldn't keep up with it. It wasn't able to index all of that new content and Google Caffeine is a solution to that. What Google Caffeine did for you was twofold. So previously, Google had to refresh the whole index before your new blog post would appear in the search engine results pages. This happened on average about every two weeks. Now with Caffeine, your new content can be ranked and included almost immediately into the index. Now if your niche is one where information is flowing quickly and where there's always breaking news, Caffeine means that your new content will be found and indexed very quickly. But even if you're not in one of those newsy kind of niches where something's always going on, caffeine still affects you. Why? Because caffeine's goal is to provide searchers with a great user experience. Now, Google wrote that searchers want to find the latest relevant content and publishers expect to be found the instant they publish. But I want to emphasize this part. Searchers want to find the latest relevant content. And this is exactly what we've seen happen as a result of caffeine. 
the Google results pages are actually displaying more recent content much more often than they used to, to the point that newer content seems to rank higher more often uh, than it used to, and sometimes even outrank older content, um, even if it doesn't necessarily have the same amount of, say, backlinks and things like that to support its ranking. But Google appreciates the freshness of that content. Uh, now, Google is able to do this in part because with caffeine, they have the backbone, the indexing power to do so, but also because it's their belief, as we see here, that more recent content is what the searcher actually wants. So as a publisher who understands the value of content, you will only benefit from being able to provide both Google and visitors exactly what they're looking for, and that is more fresh content more often.